best piece of it all. It looks really good. What's going on guys? Today we got Tyler over with the Camaro. If you can't tell by the box and the tape, we're gonna be doing a big install today. Here's all the stuff that comes in the kit, but not included in the kit. Tyler's gonna tell you right here what uh, else he bought. So what else I bought is I bought the high pressure fuel pump. Um, I also bought the LT4 injectors. And then I have a DSX uh, borrow breakout kit and the three bar map sensor, which you need for running boost. And then just some miscellaneous parts in there for the fuel lines, because you're supposed to replace those once you take them off. Then this box right here is just the Mighty Mouse catch can, the wild one because um, for crankcase ventilation under boost. And then this last thing is just the LS3 crank seal because the LT1 crank seals tend to blow out and then oil leaks. So this is all the extra stuff that he had to purchase, but you get pretty much everything you need from Pro Charger itself. So we're gonna back his car in and uh, start taking this bad boy apart. First thing we're going to do, we're disconnecting and taking off the whole air intake. Air intake out. Next, we're going to take off the intake manifold and install the new injectors. I had, but that driver is so nice. Right now we're just going to take the fuel lines off and then that'll give us access to the fuel pump so we can change that and put the new high pressure one in. Oh, the pump's stupid. really easy. All it is are just two bolts right there and then it comes out. So a 13 millimeter socket back on the fuel pump on those two bolts that you see him taking off right now. So and there's the fuel pump removed. So here are the old injectors and the old fuel pump. That's the first fuel reel done. Now time to put the LT4 ones in. So right now Tyler's unboxing the new injectors. That's the last fuel reel, all the injectors installed. The new high pressure fuel pump, you wanna make sure the plunger is seated all the way down in the lowest position. So to do so, we're gonna grab a breaker bar and a socket and turn the motor over till you can feel that this is in the lowest position. And then you just slide the fuel pump in and tighten it down and it's good to go. Stop. Good? Yep. So now with that plunger all the way down, you can install the high pressure fuel pump. That's again, just the two 13 millimeter bolts. Tighten that down, should be all good. 
for the high pressure fuel pump bolts, you want to torque those down to 18 foot pounds of torque. First fuel rail, all the injectors put on. Just slides into place. When you start screwing it down, it'll start slowly tightening down. Reconnect all the weather packs and So just like on the fuel pump, these fuel rail bolts are going to be tightened down to 18 foot-pounds of torque. So now that Tyler has all of them snugged up, he's just going to torque them down. So along with the new injectors and the new high-pressure fuel pump, he also ordered some new fuel crossovers. What are these torque to? 44 inch pounds first pass around and then 39 uh, inch pounds on the second pass around. Tyler's just throwing on the throttle body now, taking off the stock map sensor because he bought the three bar to put on. And then here's the new three bar map sensor. Eight T15 screws and two little plastic guys. I want to remove this plastic trim. Seven millimeter nut driver. And start undoing the nuts on this plastic tray. Uh, so right now I'm just removing the 10 millimeter bolts uh, right here. Right here and right there. Then you're also going to remove this plastic one. After removing all those bolts, this glass guard drops down. I'm Tyler right now is removing that one screw, the seven millimeter. Taking out the fender liner now. So we can access that one seven, seven millimeter bolt and then the other four that are located behind the fender liners. I'm going to remove these four T15 bolts holding on the fender liner. And then those are the other screws you got to remove. After removing those two, if you look up, there's one there and then one more up there. And you have to remove those also on both sides. This plug, it'll slide off the grommet and then you just have to unplug it from over there. So I just simply pull the red little clip and then push down and unplug it and you're good to go. So you're just going to want to remove the six plastic trees that hold on this transmission cooler. So right now Tyler's moving the auxiliary radiator scoop the driver side auxiliary radiator scoop we have this area opened up next step is to remove the brake ducts on uh, the passenger side and driver side which are held on by one Christmas tree right here you can see I already have it out a little bit so after removing that one little bolt this guy just pulls off of there you're good to go while I'm doing that Tyler's gonna remove the driver side headlight the driver's side headlight out. I'm just gonna take off this brake duct on the passenger side real fast. Removing the uh, passenger side radiator scoop. There's the passenger side brake duct. Jumping. And that's smart like yourself. 
to the uh, um, taking off the horn brackets, all you do, there's this little wiring harness, you just pull up on it, there's that, it's done with a 10 millimeter bolt, um, and then there's a little wiring harness right here that I will be pulling off of, and then we will be setting those to the side right now, and then those will be relocated with uh, a bracket from the protractor kit um, to stay out of the way of the intercooler. Kind of drain the coolant, uh, remove the coolant cap to the reservoir, I head under the car and find the drain plug. We're going to be changing the thermostat out, which is right there. So now that we have the coolant drain, we don't have anything to worry about. So we're just going to pop those three bolts out. There's the old thermostat. The one is right here. Got a KTEC one because apparently the Mishimoto ones tend to leak. So I don't want any of that happening. So we're running the KTEC one instead. Next on the list, we're removing that driver's side auxiliary radiator. And uh, we're just moving the two top 10 millimeter bolts for that auxiliary radiator. You're just gonna want to take off these two bolts. You can see the one there and the one that I have the socket on. What do we got next? Using the 13 millimeter, remove the bolt attaching to the bottom of the bracket to the K member. And let the radiator hang down. So after finding the bolt, so right here you can see this is the bracket that goes to the aux radiator, right to the K member. So it's a 13 millimeter, you're just gonna wanna remove that. We need to remove this clamp right here and then this clamp on this hose right here. To remove these pain in the ass clamps, there's the two hoses that connect to the aux radiator. So now we have that out of the way. That brace we're removing on the driver's side the bolt there. Then you remove the bolt from the top right here. Here's the last bolt for this brace. So you just pull it out. Looks like we are going to be installing the crank pulley, which Tyler is over here right now unboxing. Got to remove the crank bolt. It's a 24 millimeter socket. No, oh, maybe she's off. Oh yeah. Crank bolt's broken loose. We did heat it up for 30 seconds. We read online that that helped, and it definitely did help. Is this in the There she is. We are gonna replace the front crank seal. This is a LS3 one. I guess the LT1 ones are not great for boost, so that's why you upgrade to the LS3 one. So for that, we gotta remove the harmonic balancer. Just running a puller, so hopefully we can get going on this and then get back on track with the Pro Charger install. You put it on the tensioner, you push it down, and then the belt comes loose, so then I just take the belt off. That's that belt right there. Alright, so after playing with the puller for a while, we finally have gotten a setup to where it works. And now the harmonic balancer is finally off. We take the belt off now, and then Tyler can lift out the balancer. And here's the stupid AC belt. And there's the stupid gasket that we're gonna replace. Or seal, or whatever the fuck that thing's called. After throwing my brain at this for a minute, I uh, eventually pulled it out. I thought it was just picking at the rubber pieces, so that's why it looks like that. But as you can see, there is a, a big difference between this one. I mean, the rubber that was on this one was so flimsy, so it's good that we're replacing that. Hopefully we can reinstall that with the new seal and then install this bad lad on with it. Didn't show you, but we got the crank seal in. We're currently reseating the harmonic balancer by using the stock bolt. It's almost all the way in. So that's looking real good. <sighs> so the balancer is all the way on. Not a walk on this AC belt. All right, so 
we walked the AC belt on, so we're all good there. Now it looks like we have to move the radiator hose out of the way. So we have to disconnect it from the fan right there. All right, so after disconnecting that, we're just taking this hose and we're gonna be pushing it down out of the way. Now we're gonna disconnect the little hose right here and right here. With this small radiator hose disconnected from the fan housing, we now can move it over to the passenger side for the time being. Tyler's currently doing that. Almost done, I think he's got one more to go after that one. And then we can probably get this thing installed. You can see how the cam locks are supposed to be fashioned. We have all these in place, ready to go. We're gonna take some silicone and put it on that flat surface all the way around here. And then also gonna put it on the new bolt when we put it on. Tyler is just hand tightening the bolt in. The crank bolt is hand tight. You want to go back on those cam lock bolts and back them off a full turn. Now with those loosened a full turn, you want to rotate the whole pulley itself counterclockwise until the um, cam locks make it stop. And once you fully lock the crank pulley, go back on those cam lock bolts and tighten them. Now the cam locks are fully tightened. Torque wrench turned up to 240 foot pounds. Tyler's gonna give her the beans. There she is, that's 240 foot pounds of torque. Now to move on to the fun stuff. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Day two, baby. Still completely destroyed. Let's fix that. Last left off, we gotta zip tie this. Uh, big radiator hose to the fan housing. So Tyler's gonna do that real quick. So it looks like starting off, we're uh, gonna work with this relocation bracket for the AC line. We're just removing this plastic tree and then the one right there below it. So you wanna use a 10 millimeter uh, socket, take the nut so you can remove the bracket. Remove that nut, slide this bracket off, and then you're gonna be using this new relocation bracket. So there's the new bracket. Tyler's just tightening it down right now. You can see it pulled the AC line down out of the way for when the Pro Charger's sitting there. For installing that relocation bracket up next is the actual Pro Charger bracket. You have to remove the idler pulley, which is this guy's three quarter wrench. You're gonna wanna use a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench and undo this bolt right there, holding the wearing harness on. And then once that bracket's loosened up a little bit, you're just gonna uh, remove that clip from the actual bracket so the wiring harness hangs freely. For the bracket for the Pro Charger itself, using this hole, this hole, and those two. So then you're just moving this stuff out of the way and later on you reconnect it. Over here at the bracket, we're just gonna get all the uh, bolts and spacers ready and then we will mount it up on the car. Brackets fully on, nice and tight. I'm gonna reinstall the idler pulley, which goes in this second hole in between those two for the bracket right there. So up next, we were coming up to this plug for the oil. When you open up the package, you get this fitting and then this line. We were looking at this for a while and finally figured out the end of this unscrews. This part actually is what goes into here. This, screw, this screws in perfectly, and then now the 90 goes on to here, the line goes on to there. Um, it can be kind of confusing because they actually do tighten this, this fitting to this very tight. So just know it'll break loose, and then you just have to put this fitting in between this and that. Here's the oil fill, it's just a flathead. Here's the oil that the um, kit comes with. So we're just gonna put that in right now. gonna reinstall the dipstick and tighten it down.
So to tighten these Pro Charger uh, bracket bolts, you're going to be using a quarter inch and a 5 16 Allen key. So that's four of the bolts in. The other two right there. Or you just got to move the tensioner. You put it in there. Now you can see there's a bolt hole there. So that's all six bolts in the head unit is on so now with that installed i think it's time to throw the belt on all right so after battling the belt we got it on everything's looking good in place it's starting to look like a pro charger install transmission first we start off by taking the transmission cooler bracket the transmission cooler unclip the transmission line from the plastic air shroud we're going to be removing this plastic piece on the uh, driver's side of the uh, radiator. And there was these little uh, metal things, clips. Uh, there's four on each side. Looks like you're going to remove those. There's one there. Uh, there's another one right there. Here's the location of the other two uh, metal clips that hold that plastic on. I'm going to take the crash bar off anyway, so we're just going to take that off real fast. That way these will just slide out easily on both the driver and passenger side. There's the crash bar off. And now here's this stupid plastic thing that I'll pull out. The driver's side out. And I'll trip the passenger side out. And that's the driver's side on the relocation bracket for the transmission cooler. Got those plastic pieces off on both sides. We are gonna be removing these two 10 millimeter uh, bolts on each side. I just installed the new brackets for the uh, radiator both sides reuse the stock bushing stock bolts all right so we mounted the brackets on the inner cooler those new brackets bolt on where the crash bar goes there and there so we're we're gonna line everything up and then just loosely fit it on So the intercooler is bolted up, everything is snug, Tyler got antsy so he threw the, uh, the pipe on to check out how she looks, everything is looking to fit pretty good. So this is the diagram we're going off of, uh, Tyler has the one pipe already in which fits very nicely. Okay so the 135 and the 90 are on. All right, since we have the tubes in position, uh, we're throwing on some clamps. Got uh, this one clamped to the throttle bed right now, and this one to the top of the intercooler. Everything's tight. All the uh, all the piping looks good. It's about the uh, the best we can do fitting wise. So it looks really good. Take the math off of here and put it on this tube, but sadly it is right there. So we're gonna unbolt that real fast. Here we got the MAF in, right there. Tyler's hooking up the extension, and then we should be able to plug it in. So here's the uh, extender they give you installed. So uh, I'll grab the horns real fast, show what we gotta do. So for the horns, you just uh, pretty much switch them side by side. Um, so where the left one was, put it where the right one was. Where the right one was, put it where the left one was. Or you're gonna use that hole for the bumper bracket along with the bracket for the horns. And there you go, that's the horns relocated. We're actually deleting this uh, driver's side uh, auxiliary radiator. What we're doing is there's a brass fitting they give you. Pop that together and then take these clamps and you're just connecting the line and it's pretty much like a bypass. If we go, there's a little bypass with the fitting and the clamps are on. So that's all good to go. Got the headlight on. Um, next up is to fill the coolant, but we're gonna wait to do that. Uh, right now we're gonna start on the surge system. So uh, Tyler has the race valve. So it's actually pretty easy to get on. All right, so after installing the O-ring, install the blow valve. Yep. Just slide it on there and it screws in from the back. 
with the race valve installed. Now we got to install the supplied modified air shroud for the transmission cooler, which goes on that bad boy. What's up, Taylor? What up, Dave? So we got this in place now. Uh, we got to put the ambient air temperature sensor right here. So now that's in place. Now I'm all this trans cooler stuff back in with the factory hardware. All right, so we got the uh, passenger side brake duct on and the aux uh, radiator duct on also. So this side should be all buttoned up. This is what they show you, but for our design, this is what we've come out with. Um, we'll explain when we get everything on. He's running the, uh, the line from the blow off valve up and around. I'm gonna hide it behind the pro charger. And then up to here, and it's gonna go right to this fitting gonna come back at it in the morning uh we just gotta do catch can and then the uh the intake part for the pro charger all right new morning time to wrap this up it's the air filter we're gonna have to drill a hole for that plastic fitting in a half inch drill bit drill the hole fits nicely all good so now this end will attach to this line that will go to right there we're going to take a break from that. We're going to fill up the coolant. Um, we did get this uh, line hooked up to the uh, intake, so that's all good. All right, so after battling this tube, finally have it on. Uh, you really have to shave it. Unfortunately, they they make this tube that kind of like a universal, so fits all. The D1X is just a little bit too big, so you really got to shave it the inside of this tube. But got it on. Got the line hooked up going all the way around over to the PCV. Tyler's been working on the Mighty Mouse catch can. So as you can see, he's got the fitting on over there. He's got the bracket on, uh, you can see right there. He's actually got the catch can in his hand. For the catch can lines, this side we routed up and then to the oil connection right here. This one over here off the like 45 degree, we routed into the throttle body access and right into the pro charger. Uh, like vacuum bracket they give you and then, and then that goes into the intake manifold and then that line goes all the way down to the blow valve so that's pretty much that for the uh, catch can routing and the surge system but hopefully we're about to get a start up here Right now we're gonna slap on this radiator cover real fast load the camaro on taylor's trailer tonight so that'll be good so we're just trying to square everything away here's the box the pro charger kit came with here's everything that was removed off the car taylor's here with the trailer let's get it loaded up under its own weight now pretty sure we shut the hood too right want to grab that tape out of there Looks really funny without the front bumper, but it looks cool with that. Stop. Stop. Oh, now car's off to M1 concourse to a garage where me and Tyler will be shortly. We have a few more things we're gonna do, install the bumper, but. Right now, this is probably goodbye to the Camaro for a few days. All right, Camaro, we'll see you in two days.
stuff down there. It's just a driving airplane now. Sounds crazy. There you go. And that's a pro charger install. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Hopefully we can put it back together. <laughs> That's the fun part. And then you move the front door. Uh, <laughs> Let's just, uh... Yeah, I think we're getting a fucking warthog. So this is our diagram. Oh, whoops. I always got the 135 degree elbow on here. Alright, with, with the rate.